welcome to the seventh session on inner part spaces today we are going to do, look at the so-called gram sheet process that is given a set of linearly independent vectors how to get our orthogonal set of vectors you will define all those things don't be in a hurry okay and to make ideas very clear the geometry also comes out we had already done that earlier okay but I will recall with a very specific example also today and work it out and then move on to the general case and just to make sure that you take this size in quantized bed perhaps I would like to break this into two parts rather than a single video spanning about an hour so I, perhaps I will make it somewhat shorter one so that you will not be compelled to finish the entire video in one single sitting okay because there is always some kind of you know inherent pressure on you guys right so I'm just trying to make it a quantized bit okay so let us get started yeah so you all know this is my YouTube channel this is my email ID you can download the list of videos on my channel by going to this link or you can simply scan this QR code there you search for the list of videos and that is a PDF file which gives a description of each and every video it's a link and also possible references and it's always periodically updated okay because trying to search for if I want to learn a topic let us say even inner product spaces you go to my channel it will be very difficult for you to look for the videos and that too it may not come in the proper order so you may not know where to start so these things will help you yeah okay so as I said today's topic is inner product spaces gram shoot process I think I'm in tablet mode right okay yeah I see this is a problem once in a while I get out let me also make sure that yeah recording is on okay All right so let us get started So I will just recall quickly what we had already done. Okay. Suppose V is an real inner product space. Remember the last lecture we had complex, but don't worry, we will come to that. And suppose we have said suppose V1, V2, sorry, V2, these are two linearly independent vectors. Then what we did was we had orthogonal projection of V2 in the direction of V1. This was by definition V2, V1, okay, and V1 divided by V1, V1, that is same as V2, V1, V1 by norm V1 squared. Okay, therefore they are non-zero okay again look at the picture just this is my v1 and this may be my v2 and this is the orthogonal projection okay this vector let me make it a different color this vector is your p v1 of v2 okay we call this as the orthogonal projection projection of v2 in the direction of v1 okay so notice that as we did earlier this one is independent of v1 because p v1 of v2 lies in here okay and the this is independent because if I take T V1 where T is not 0 right then what will be P T V1 of V2 that's by definition V2 T V1 by T V1 inner part with the T V1 and T V1 
right? But this t and this t comes out as t squared v2 v1 by v1. By this t and this t comes out, therefore t squared into v1 v1. Therefore, they get cancelled. This is nothing other than p1 of v2, right? So, that is why we don't, we say in the direction of v1, okay? It actually lies, it is actually orthogonal projection into the one dimensional subspace spanned by v1. Do you understand this? Okay. These are the small things which teachers do not explain even at master's level. They will simply write their formula and leave it. But you should, these kind of small tricks you should learn to appreciate. Okay. Pause, review, proceed. Okay. So, I will call this P P V1 of V2 was the V1 component of V2. You understand why I call this? For example, in the case of R2, if I orthogonally project on the x-axis, okay, what I get is the x-coordinate of V2, right? So, I x component of V2. So, yeah, keeping that geometry in mind, I can also call this as, but this is same as, as I said, orthogonal projection of V2 in the direction of V1. See, am I going slow? Do you remember in the first lecture I said, this topic, many students have a lot of difficulty. So, I said I will go slow. So, you can see I keep repeating many times. Okay, so from different angles I am looking at. Of course, I should look at different angles. Okay, at a, okay for a length of time. Angle and length are mentioned. Do you look at the pun? Very good. Okay. Now let's go ahead. Okay. Now what we did was something very interesting. So let me call W1, keep the same notation as B1, W2 to be V2 minus the orthogonal projection of V2 in the direction of V1 which is V2 minus inner product V2 V1 V1 by norm v1 squared and what we found was this w1 and w2 are orthogonal to each other or perpendicular to each other therefore this again picture this is my v1 this is my v2 this is my this is my p v1 of v2 and this object okay this is your w2 and remember v1 is same as w1 okay the picture shows they are orthogonal we already explained in the last lecture but please check it again okay do you remember that's how i master whenever i come you i will not say yes i have checked it so i don't want to do it no you check it again so that you become very comfortable you also become fast in computing okay please check it i will put a prp so that you feel comfortable please do all these things you will be master of inner product spaces okay so let us look at two things so i started with v1 and v2 linearly independent so i ended with the w1 w2 then I found out W1 is orthogonal to W2, right? Now notice that, can W2 be 0? Can it happen? Suppose W2 is 0, what does it mean? Look at this, that means V2 is a scalar multiple of V1, but that contradicts V1 and V2 are linearly independent. Therefore, this cannot happen. Right? Because if this W2 equal to 0 implies V2 is a scalar multiple. V1, therefore this implies V1 and V2 are linearly dependent. A contradiction. Right? Therefore, let us look at the subspace W which is span of V1 and V2. This is dimension of W is 2. 
right? Now, let us look at what is span of W1 and W2, right? I claim span of W1 and W2 is same as span of V1, V2, right? Let us go slow, okay? Now, what is the span of W1? This is of the form A W1 plus B W2, but W1 is same as V1, therefore B W2. But what is this? This is B times what is W2? V2 minus some scalar multiple of V1. Let's not worry about what the scalar. Okay, the scalar may be B2 V1 by norm V1 squared, etc. Alright, this is V2, this is V1. Okay, this is some scalar. If you want to call it, I mean, call it alpha. This is alpha times v1. Okay. Therefore, this belongs to span of v1, v2. Do you understand this? Therefore, what is the conclusion? Span of w1, w2 is contained in span of v1, v2. Okay. Right. Now I claim W1 and W2 are okay, orthogonal to each other. That implies W1 and W2 is linearly independent. Okay. Why? This is a very very general fact, but you can actually show that. Okay. I will prove that. Okay. Let us make a very general fact. Suppose V, this is an inner parted space. Okay, this could be over R, R over C. And let us look at the set. Okay, something like uh, V1. I might be able to help you if you finish your sentence. Okay. Okay, this is a subset of non zero vectors. That is, each VA is not equal to 0. 1 is not equal to 0. Equal to 0 right? Further assume that VI intersection, inner part of VJ is 0 for all I and J. That is, this set is, okay, call this set SS, right? That means it's one space S is a set of pairwise. orthogonal non-zero vector. Right? So, each VI is perpendicular to VJ for J not equal to I. That's it. Okay? And each VI is non-zero. Right? Okay. Then, we claim S is linearly independent. Okay? So, Suppose not. Okay, let okay a one v one plus a k v k equal to zero, where ages are this either in R R and C or, right? Okay. Then what do I want to prove? We want to prove each j a j is zero. This is what we want to prove. Okay. Now what we have to use the inner product. That is by it taking the left hand side that is a1 v1 plus a2 v2 plus a k v k okay take the inner product of this vector with some vector so that I should get only essentially a j the rest of them should be killed the rest of them should be do that you understand that so I am looking for some vector v so that summation a j v j inner product v should be some scalar times only some a j should come Right or simply say a k should come. If this is k, therefore it means just a r. Okay, for one less than or equal to r, less than or equal to k. I want to say a r is zero. Okay, that's very easy because if I take a one v one plus a k v k, you know, plot it with the v r, fix an r between one and k, then this will be a one v one v r plus a R V R 
vr plus ak vk vr right but what do i know okay this is vr vr therefore this is okay this one will be zero this one will be zero everything will be zero therefore only surviving term will be ar into vr vr that is equal to zero because this object itself is zero right but what we know about vr vr is not zero therefore vr vr is not zero therefore this is not zero this implies ar is zero right so what have we shown please go through the proof the proof is very easy okay but don't try to memorize what we are doing is we want to use the inner product so i'm taking inner product of a1v1 plus akvk with some vector so that only essentially ar appears since v1 v2 vk are all mutually orthogonal the obvious thing is take inner product with vr therefore any vi inter inner product with vr will be zero if i is not equal to r that is the trick okay pause review proceed so go back to our earlier situation so w1 w2 we know this is a non zero each one of them non zero and they are orthogonal to each other so by the last fact okay w1 w2 is linearly independent and where do they live they live in the span of v1 v2 which is w and what is the dimension of w2 and therefore i have two linearly independent vectors in the vector subspace two dimensional vector subspace w therefore what do i know about this w1 w2 is a basis right so let us summarize what we have done let me just make sure that i started in the thing yeah so what you have done is w with v1 v2 is a basis for w maybe if you want to take b itself this is a basis for okay this okay then out of this we constructed w1 w2 this is also a basis but what is the important thing it's a orthogonal basis what do i mean by orthogonal the set is orthogonal set of non zero vectors okay that means each of the any pair of vectors are mutually perpendicular to each other okay take wi and wj in this and uh, i not equal to zero wi intersection sorry inner product wj is zero that's why we proved yeah and one talks about orthonormal basis is is something like w let us say u1 u2 so that this is orthogonal basis okay that means it's an orthogonal set and it's also a basis so that each of the vector is of norm 1 that is your normalizing each one of them will have same length all the same length okay now let's go back so given v a basis v1 v2 we constructed an orthogonal basis w1 w2 but it's very easy to construct an orthonormal basis how do i construct put uj equal to wj by norm wj notice that this is w1 w2 are basic vectors from a basis therefore wj is not equal to 0 for all j therefore wj by this and what is the norm of u j this we had already done maybe i have not done this squared is okay wj by norm wj wj by norm wj the scalar comes out therefore it's wj squared into inner product wj wj but this is norm wj whole squared therefore equal to one therefore each one one of the vectors uj will be one therefore what i have got u1 u2 is an ortho normal basis for v that's it okay pause review proceed before i stop i will just give an easy example so that we will just 
quickly do that. Okay. Let V be R2, but the inner product, let us say it is given by, let us say 2, 1, 1, 1. Notice that 2 is positive, determinant is 2, 1, which is positive. Therefore, we know this defines inner product. What is the inner product? Suppose I have x1, x2, say, sorry, x1, y1, inner product with x2, y2, this is given by 2, x1, x2 plus 1, 1, therefore it is x1, y2 plus x2, y1 plus y1, y2. This is the inner product. Okay. And is it positive definite? Therefore, if that is x1 equal to x2, y1 equal to y2 equal to y and this equal to x, then inner product of x, y with the x, y equal to 2x squared plus this is x, x, y, x, y, therefore 2x, y plus y squared, right? I am just doing it, okay, we did with the AHHB, but I asked you to look at something on your own, I am not sure how many of you did that, I know my students well, right, therefore 2 take out, then complete the square, that is x squared plus xy plus y squared, therefore this I can write as 2 into x squared plus, how do I do that, so this is, you can write this as, x plus half of y whole squared whole squared right but if this will be x squared plus 2 into x into half of y that is x y plus I hope it is one fourth y squared I hope I am writing it correctly right therefore x squared this is x y so I got x y but this is extra therefore this is going to be minus one fourth no there is a two out therefore two times right therefore there is a two out right therefore it's two times this plus y squared so what do i get i get two times x plus y by two whole squared minus this is half right therefore half of y squared plus okay but this is equal to 0. That means first thing is O is 0 because each one of the term must be 0. Therefore, O is 0. If O is 0, that means 2x two x squared because O is 0. Therefore, 2x squared is 0. Therefore, x squared is 0 and hence x is 0. So, this is positive definite. So, this is an inner product. Inner product on R2. Right? Now, what is the, we can take my V1 v2 uh, as a standard basis e1 e2 right okay now what is my w1 so let us compute okay what is inner product e1 e1 this we know just we have to go back to the definition that's going to be what for e1 which is 1 comma 0 therefore x is 1 y is 0 therefore this will be 0 there will be 2 therefore e1 e1 is 2 and what is inner product e1 e2 with respect to this again go to that so this is my x1 y1 that is 1 comma 0 x2 y2 which is 0 comma 1 so you substitute okay x1 x2 that is 0 then x1 y2 that is 1 and x2 y1 are you following x1 this is 1 y2 that is 1 and x2 is the Okay, then x2 times y1, that is 0. Therefore, that is gives me only 1. And y1, y2. See, y1 is 0, y2 is 1, therefore it is 0. Okay, make sure that you understand all these things. Therefore, it is 1. Okay, and I think now we know. So, let, we are going to take w1 equal to e1. And how do I just check w2? w2 will be e2 minus e2 inner product e1. And e1 and the length of e1 that is length squared this is norm of e1 squared okay that is 2 are you following but what is e2 e1 this is 1 e2 e1 is 1 therefore i have 
0 comma 1 minus half comma 0 that is going to be minus half comma 1 that is my w2 so let us just make sure w1 is perpendicular to w2 therefore what is my x1 x2 so my x1 y1 is 1 comma 0 x2 y2 is minus half comma 1 and what was the inner product of those two things two times x1 x2 plus x1 y2 plus x2 y1 plus y1 y2 see y1 y2 this is 0 and this y2 this is 0 okay and this is x2 this is 0 and x1 x2 is 2 into minus half all right so i don't seem to get zero so that means i made a mistake yeah okay let us do that x1 yeah sorry i made a mistake here do you see that x1 into y2 x1 is 1 y2 is 1 therefore this is 1 and here next is x2 into y1 that is 0 therefore this is plus 1 that is zero. therefore okay and the vectors are not non zero right there are non zero vectors therefore w1 is 1 comma 0 and w2 is minus half comma 1 okay there are non zero vectors and we just check w1 and w2 are orthogonal therefore w1 w2 is an orthogonal basis How to get orthonormal? You have to compute the norm of W1 and norm of W2. Okay, that is a pure and calculation. I do not want to do that. Okay, please go through that. I took time. I went very slow. I also looked at only a two-dimensional inner product space to explain the ideas. Okay, the Gramsci process. In the next lecture, we will do the general case. Okay. And those of you who think that you are very good, okay, you like abstraction much easier, you can even skip this if you want. But still, I would believe to be very confident about what we are doing, it's always look at some good examples, simple example, and see what really happens, understand. Okay, that is the best policy. Okay, in case sometime later you have some small doubt, you know how to check things by looking at some simple but non trivial case. We looked at that last example is one such yeah please understand i hope you enjoyed we'll meet again